Hi there. Today on the Tool Time Corral, we're talking about a different kind of power. <coughs> <laughs> Saw horsepower, because a man is judged by his pair of ponies. That's right, partner. And the sturdiest saw horses are made of pine or fur. A good rule of thumb is it should be sturdy enough to support Al's mom after a big buffet. <laughs> you know, Tim, my shop tastes normally run old-fashioned. But when it comes to the saw horse, I've decided to let my hair down and switch to metal. Now I'm a guy of the 90s. Would that be 1890s, Al? <laughs> this saw horse is half the weight and can easily be moved around the job site. That was an incredible demonstration, Al. <laughs> if you want a saw horse, I'll get you on a job site. I got the stallion for you. Tim. Al. Tim, where, where are you? Well, while we're waiting for Tim, I, uh... I would, uh, well, I'd like to regale you with an anecdote about my first saw horse. <laughs> Her name was Lily. Whoa, 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 whoa. Your sawhorse has an engine? Right. It'll do 160 on the interstate. <laughs> Listen to this thing idle. Well, take it out of gear. Huh? Out of gear. <laughs> We ran the speaker wires to the amplifier down to the transformer, which we goosed up to give it what? More power! Yeah. <laughs> Dad, is the transformer thing that you set on fire? You call that a fire? <laughs> no, when I fixed the water heater, that was a fire. Right. All right. You should be able to get your mom now. Hey, Jill, can you hear me? Jill, can you hear me? Of course I can hear you. I'm right behind you. <laughs> that you're in the garage. We're testing out the new intercom. Today is the day. That you come to your senses and realize we don't need an intercom? The day I come to my senses is a long way off. <laughs> Mark, come on. I'm going to go buy you some clothes. I don't want to stay here until the intercom starts working. Believe me, we'll be back way before that happens. <laughs> Hey, Jeremy, how you doing? Can't complain. All right. What's that, the emergency broadcast system? Yeah, we're at war with the English. Apparently, they want their muffins back. All right, line them up, give us our muffins, Dad. sign them up, put butter on them. I want all Dad. right, Dad. always Dad. a... could we? Oh. <laughs> hey, come on, we better get upstairs. <laughs> this thing could blow at any minute. Wait a minute. How can you blow up an intercom? Hmm. You don't know my dad. He blew up a dishwasher, a blender, and seven toasters. Two blenders, five toasters. He said so many accidents, the hospital gave him a preferred customer card. <laughs> Two more head injuries, we get a free trip to Hawaii. Go 
Fools were just an act. Are you kidding? They're thinking of changing the name of the show to Fool Time. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they install video games there? <laughs> no, I went to check out a book. You checked out a book? David Copperfield, since when have you been into Charles Dickens? Mom, I love Charles Dickens. <laughs> no author's more brilliantly captured the poignancy of youth. <laughs> Give me a break. Why did you check out that book? All right. Well, Jennifer's starting to like this new guy named Lance. And they talk about reading all the time. And this is Jennifer's favorite book. So you said it was your favorite, too? Well, yeah. Now I can talk to her about it. Well, you must be really worried about Jennifer, because David Copperfield is a long book. <laughs> How bad can it be? On his last TV special, he made the Statue of Liberty disappear. <laughs> no! Oh, no, 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 no. So... Honey, no. No, this is not David Copperfield, the magician. This is David Copperfield, The Tortured Waif. You know, 64 chapters worth. Oh, man. Oh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tim! Tim! What? Oh. <laughs> the airplane's flying around causing all the static on this thing. Why don't you just call the airport and tell them that they're interfering with your intercom? Stupid thing, stupid intercom. Something bothering you? No. So slugging the intercom is just part of the installation process? <laughs> Does radio seem different to you lately? What do you mean? Hmm. He's making fun of me in front of Jeremy. And what kind of guy makes jokes at other people's expense? I don't know, maybe we should ask Al. <laughs> we work together. We have a give and take relationship. I give it, he takes it. That's different. Look, Randy jokes about you, you joke about Randy. That's just your relationship. This is behind my back. Are you doing eavesdropping on it? It's not. No, the intercom in his room was on. I just heard him talking. You mean it was actually working? <laughs> For a second or so, yeah. <laughs> he was talking about how I screw up all the time at work. <laughs> well. <laughs> It's not exactly a state secret. He, he said they should change the name of the show from Tool Time to Fool Time. Look, if this is really bothering you this much, I think you should talk to him about it. I don't want to talk to him about it. Well, you can't let stuff like this fester. Sure I can. Guys always let stuff fester. Remember the Adams Family? <laughs> Uncle Fester, not Aunt Fester. Whoa. Excellent point, Tim. I'll call him down here. Hey, Randy, come down here. I want to talk to you for a minute. Flight uh, 211, you're clear for takeoff on runway south. Man, I finally got through the introduction. Man, by the time you finish that book, Jennifer's going to be a grandmother. <laughs> yeah, but if I want to keep her, I have to get through it. Why? You never read anything for a girl before. Yeah, but this is junior high. You have to work a lot harder to impress the girls. <laughs> so, sticking straws up your nose doesn't work anymore? <laughs> oh, no, that's still big. Hey, guys. Uh, Would you mind going downstairs for me so I can talk to Randy? Come on, Dad, I'm trying to read. Oh, you can read it later. David Copperfield, that guy's great. He made the Statue of Liberty disappear. <laughs> Dad, this is about the tragic waif. Oh, yeah, the tragic waif. <laughs> Can we talk for a minute? Well, if you wanted to talk to me, why didn't you just call me on the intercom? <laughs> or is that still picking up ambulance calls? <laughs> well, you really bust my chops sometimes, you know? Well, Dad, you make it so easy. <laughs> but you, you, you could go over the line, like that little conversation with Jeremy. No, we were just kidding around. You did call me names just kidding around? I didn't call you names. I heard you call me a goofball. What, were you standing outside my door? No, I heard, heard it through the intercom. Oh, so is that why you put it in? No. So you could spy on me. You ever hear of a thing called privacy? Have you ever heard a thing called respect for your father? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, what about respect for me? I mean, you were eavesdropping. It was an accident, kid. I'm telling you. The point is, you call my work full time. So? So, tool time puts clothes on your back and food in your stomach, all right? Look at me when I'm talking to you. I heard what you said. And? And if you didn't grunt like an ape and break things all the time, maybe your show wouldn't be such a joke. Hey, wait a minute. My show's a joke? Does that mean I'm a joke to you? I got a joke for you. I got a good joke for you. Here's a punchline. A week. What's the question? Eh, too late. Question is, how long are you going to be grounded for? That's a joke. You're not laughing. Maybe you heard that one before. Hey, Mark, can you hear me? Mark, can you hear me? What? Can you hear me on the intercom? Dad, I can't hear you. What? Dad, I can't read with all this yelling. Would you quiet down? Why? How do we ever get along without this intercom? That's why I installed it, so we wouldn't have all this yelling. Hey, Mark, tell you what. Turn up the volume real loud. What? Ah. <laughs> How's David Copperfield coming? Pretty slow. Well, stick with it. It's a classic. Whatever happens to Aunt Betsy? Aunt Betsy? Well. Come on, honey. What did happen to Aunt Betsy? You read the book, didn't you? Of course I read it. I just don't want to spoil the ending for him. <laughs> hey, look, guys. Come on, honey. Get your bag. See you, Dad. Bye-bye. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye, Bye. sweetie. Get a coat on. Here, Ray. Bye, Mom. Say something to your father. Oh, yeah. Dad, by the way, I'm still getting the all-Spanish station through my intercom. <laughs> it's real funny. They'll quit your day job. Bye, sweetie. Well, that was real adult. Well, he started it. <laughs> Honey, you know what kids are like this age. They say a lot of really mean things. Brad never called me a joke. No, he just broke windows and got brought home by the police. You remember that? Well, I can't really be more like that. <laughs> I was just like Randy when I was his age. I believe the things I used to say to my mother. Worst things than I've said to her? <laughs> Way worse. Remember, there's this one time she called me a nickname. Well, she always called me this nickname, but this time she said it when I was 14. We just moved to a new place, you know, and she said it in front of all my new friends. I was so mad at her. I couldn't believe the things that I called her. I forgot what you called her. What was the nickname? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm really going to tell you. <laughs> Come on, what was the nickname? You have to swear that you won't breathe a word of it to anybody. Cross my heart, hope to die. I hope a wrench hits me right in the eye. <laughs> Jilly Dilly. <laughs> Jilly Dilly. I don't want to hear this name in this house ever again. All right? I might have to say it on tool time. Don't you dare. <laughs> so did you get what I was trying to tell you about Randy? I suppose. It really hurts that he thinks that I'm a joke. You know, I try to be a real good father to these boys. You're a great father. And I'm a cool father. Very cool. I can burp with the best of them. Yes, you can. I can turn my eyelids inside out and do that. Like nobody else. I can flick earwax 20 feet across the room. That's why I married you. Does everybody know what time it is? Tool That's right. Bin for Tools is proud to present Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Woo! Hi, and welcome to Tool Time. I am Tim the Tool Man Taylor, and you all know my assistant, Al Borland. What's the matter, Tim? You run out of stupid middle names? Is it my birthday? I don't always have to joke around. You know, this isn't fool time. <laughs> Today, we begin the backyard fort. Oh, boy, the kids will love it. We gotta set our posts into the dirt, so we need post hole digging, which is kind of tricky, so... Well, what the heck. Let's not use a motorized one today, and I'll show you how to use the manual post hole digger. It's just simpler to use. You're just... suggesting the manual one? Yeah, I just figured it'd be easier. You've never suggested the manual anything. I know what I thought. Do you, do you even know what manual means? <laughs> Does everything have to be a joke around here? The important thing to remember when building anything for kids is safety. You want to pad the whole base area with wood chips. Every year, over a quarter million kids are hurt in playground accidents. Keep that in mind. Of course, your original plan is called for a homemade cannon. <laughs> Well, maybe I went a little over the top. But that's not my style today. I find that a little hard to believe, Tim. What's the catch? There's no catch. As a matter of fact, I added a little something fun for the kids. A little signal button. Almost like a doorbell for the folks. Press that and listen to it. Oh, okay, I know. 
Uh, well, that wasn't in the plans either. What, what your little bells will send 5,000 volts coursing through my body? <laughs> yeah. While he stands back and yells, remember the al -Amo. <laughs> I just want you to press the bell. I know, it's just a setup, isn't it? Just, no, it's it's one a, big it setup. It's not a setup. Soon you'll start in with the it's uncalled for slams al against my mother. How she always shops in the husky section. <laughs> She wiped out the all-you-can-eat salad bar. Now, I simply came out here to put well, this just thing together. Say it. Go ahead. Just what? say it. My mother is a big fat cow. <laughs> Goodness gracious, Al. We'll be right back after these messages from Benford Tools. <laughs> Look what I just found here in my yard. Holy moly, Wilson. It's a rock. <laughs> oh, no, Tim. It's not just a rock. This is laminated dolomitic micrite. This was here even when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. Hmm. Imagine if this 400 million year old rock could talk. Hey, Brontosaurus, why don't you aim that someplace else? <laughs> <laughs> Always the jokester, Tim. Well, not today. It's real serious on tool time today. Hmm. Well, I'm surprised by that, knowing your propensity for jocularity. I did it to make a point with Randy. He said I act like an idiot on the show. Oh, ouch, that hurts. Well, this may be small consolation, Tim, but parents are the bone on which children sharpen their teeth. You're right, that's no help at all. <laughs> now, what I'm saying is, when a boy is young, he worships his father, and in order for the boy to become a man, he... He's got to start seeing his father as a fallible human being. Stop seeing him as a god. It was easier when he thought of me as a god. Well, you still got some time left with Mark. Yeah, I don't know. I sure would miss this stuff with Randy. You know, our relationship is real special. He's a lot like me. You know, we, we make jokes about each other, but we laugh about it. Well, I'm sure you're going to miss that, Tim, but for the next four or five years, he's going to seem like a different person. I wasn't like that with my dad. I worshipped him. How old were you again when he died? Eleven. How old is Randy now? Twelve, going on. Oh, hey. oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't have a chance to be rude to my dad because he died before I got the chance. Well, having kids is tough, you know. Why do you think I had rocks? <laughs> Hi, Brad. Hi, Mom. What are you doing? You taking a break from David Copperfield? I stopped reading it. I decided if a girl's gonna like me, she's gonna like me for who I am. She dumped you, huh? <laughs> yep. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, I know how much you like Jennifer. Yeah, but she's really changed. Now she's into reading and classical music. When I first met her, she was into cool stuff like clothes and hair. <laughs> well, gee... I guess this means that well, I'm not going to get to see her anymore, huh? It's okay, Mom. There'll be other girls. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I, it's just that, you know, I, I really liked her. <laughs> you know, I didn't get to say goodbye. It feels kind of unresolved. Do you want me to have her come over and she can dump you? <laughs> Where's Randy? Oh, he's up in his room. I gotta talk to him. I just found out I'm not God. Oh, Tim, I'm so sorry. <laughs> hey, Randy, you got a minute? According to you, I've got a week. The other day you said some things were really out of line. But I've uh, decided that the ground news is probably not the answer. Right. Catch you later. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I know what's going on here. You're at the point in your life you have to clean your teeth on my bones. What? For the next couple of years, you're not going to be yourself. Who am I going to be? A little wise guy that smarts off to people that a lot of people will think is a big jerk. Chip off the old block, eh? <laughs> Started already. What? Adolescence. The age of obnoxiousness. Every kid goes through this stuff, and I'm just going to wait for you on the other side. So you're saying it's okay for me to make fun of you? No, I didn't say that. I said I'll understand it. It's just your way of rebelling against me, I think. 
Well, did you rebel against your father? Uh, he died before I could be a real jerk. He'd be proud if he could see you now. <laughs> hey, that's another good example of high obnoxious art. Uh, but, but the issue is here, I don't want you making jokes about my job anymore. Yeah. Or me getting hurt and screwing things up. Anything makes me look bad. What's left to joke about? <laughs> Mom. <laughs> All right. Hey, Dad. I'm sorry that you never got a chance to be obnoxious with your father. Me too. You know, there was this one time when I was nine, I really got him steamed up, though. You finally let me play at this butane torch. <laughs> well, what happened? I got to ride in a fire truck. <laughs> and we uh, got a new garage. <laughs> something real funny about your mother? She's not really married to you? How long do you want to stay up in your room? Hey, don't blame me. It was adolescence. All right, listen. What do you think Nana called her when she was little? Jill? A name that might annoy her. Jim. <laughs> Back off, all right? Where'd you go? When she was real little, Nana used to call us. Don't even think about it, Tim. <laughs> it works. Of course it works. I know what I'm doing. Al's down here. He fixed it. Hi, Tim. How you doing? Pretty good, Al. Thanks. So what did Nana call Mom? I couldn't uh, compromise her trust in me. I heard a magic marker. <laughs> That's really, isn't it? Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Heidi. Welcome to Tool Time. I am Tool Tim with the boom. <laughs> oh, you all know my assistant, Al Boy. What's the matter, Tim? No stupid middle name? Dr is it my birthday? We don't always have. <laughs>